Hey everybody! Welcome to the Apple Watch User Guide and Tutorial. This is part 1 of 4, Apple Watch Basics. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of how to use the Apple Watch and explain how you run apps, complications, and set up your Apple Watch dock. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more about what we cover in parts 2 to 4. Now let's get to it! First, let's talk about the basics of how to use your Apple Watch. To turn the Apple Watch on or off, press and hold the side button. If it's off, this will turn it on. If it's on, this will present you with the option to power off or use Emergency SOS. Emergency SOS lets you call the local emergency number, like 911 if you're in Canada, and can be quite useful in case you can't reach your iPhone in an emergency. Remember, if you use this feature, your iPhone will need to be in Bluetooth range of, and connected to, your Apple Watch to work. And just so we can all be familiar with the basic parts of the Apple Watch, the little scroll knob above the side button on the Apple Watch is called the digital crown, and can also function as a button. When pressing the digital crown in as a button, the button feature is usually referred to as the home button. So on the Apple Watch, we have the screen, digital crown, the home button, and the side button. Next, let's talk about the Apple Watch screen. The Apple Watch screen stays off to preserve battery life until you tilt your wrist to look at it, touch the screen, or press the side or home buttons by default. So don't be concerned when your watch screen is black most of the time, as this is normal. To run an app on the Apple Watch, you simply press the home button and by default it will present you with your watch apps in the grid icon arrangement. You can scroll around the grid by pressing and moving your finger around the screen to see what's there. However, if you find this arrangement is not to your liking, you can also display them as a list by using what's referred to as a force touch. Force touch is when you firmly press the screen harder than normal and the watch presents you with alternate options. If you force touch the grid of apps, it will present you with the options where you can either keep it in grid view or change it to list view. I prefer mine in list view as it not only shows the icons of the apps but also shows their names as well, which I find quite helpful. When in list view, you can scroll up and down the list with a digital crown or swipe up and down with your finger on the screen. To run or launch an app, you just press the icon or list item. Remember that the Apple Watch is not a full-blown computer, so some apps may take a moment to load. In this example, I'm running my new favorite Apple Watch calculator app called DialCalc. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. Now let's talk about complications. Complications are links to apps or Apple Watch features that you can have on your Apple Watch face all the time. The Apple Watch will usually keep these apps in memory, so when you press the complication on the Apple Watch face, they usually load pretty fast. Different watch faces will allow you to have different numbers and sizes of complications. There are three different sizes of complications. The small icons, and what's called utilitarian small, and utilitarian large. The small icons are pretty self-explanatory. The utilitarian complications are like little boxes that are either small or large that can actively display app data on your watch face. We'll talk about how to change and customize the complications and watch faces in part two. But they really are a great feature of the Apple Watch, allowing you to run most of your popular or favorite apps quickly, and in some cases, even allow you to display app data without having to go into the app. Now let's talk about the Apple Watch dock. The dock allows you to quickly open your favorite apps or go from one app to another. You can even choose what apps stay in the dock. To access the dock, press the side button. You will be presented with the most recent apps and the apps you assign to stay in the dock. To customize or set up the dock on your Apple Watch, use the Apple Watch app on your iPhone. Tap the My Watch tab, then tap Dock. You have two primary options for setup. You can either have the dock just show the most recently used apps, or you can choose Favorites and assign favorite apps to stay in the dock. I personally like using the Favorites option as this keeps the favorite apps loaded in memory when possible so they will launch quickly, plus I also find it makes them easier to find. When using the dock, there's also a shortcut Show All Apps at the end, which comes in handy sometimes too. As I said earlier, this is part 1 of 4 of my Apple Watch user guide and tutorial. Check out part 2 to learn how to customize the Apple Watch face, choose your desired complications, and personalize the color scheme of your Apple Watch. I would also recommend checking out the other two parts after part 2. In part 3, I go over the Apple Watch control center and the Apple Watch settings to help you personalize your Apple Watch to make it better fit your needs. And in part 4, I briefly talk about the useful built-in watch apps, how to get third-party watch apps with some app recommendations, and answer some popular miscellaneous Apple Watch questions. I'll leave links in the description below so you can check those out. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one!